Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Tamara Nielsen, Business Development Director with Sarasota Real Estate Advisors. And my partner, Jerry Burson, is a licensed broker associate at Fine Properties. Part of our job is to educate the world about all the great reasons to live in Sarasota. Sarasota is known as the arts capital of Florida, and part of arts is live music. So lucky for us today, we are meeting with Barry Nicholson, also known as Reverend Barry of Reverend Barry and the Funk. Reverend Barry and the Funk are local, uh, a local band here in Sarasota and they're quickly outgrowing our town. Good for them. Uh, Reverend Barry and the Funk are a eight piece band with three horn section and three Grammy nominated performers. Barry, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, my pleasure, Tamara. Thanks for having me. Great. So the last time Jerry and I saw you perform, uh, your band perform, was a very unique situation at the uh, a Solo Theater uh, with the Sarasota Contemporary Dance Studio. Yeah. Or troupe, right? Right, right. Yeah. That, that, was, that was amazing. We're, a, we're an eight-piece uh, funk band. We we play music other than funk, but it's all kind of in that same genre. And um, I got a phone call from our our trumpet player and said, "Hey, I've got this Sarasota Contemporary Dance Troupe that wants to do a performance with us. They do this with bands, uh, I guess maybe once a year." And I remember when he first told me, I just didn't get it. I I, I kind of I was like, "So how are they? Are we going to perform with them and all this?" So I met with them, and, it, and this went on for about a year. We had to, um, you know, because they. They, of course, they do choreography to all the songs. It's very complex and it's, um, you know, so, but uh, they were wonderful to work with. Um, Lamus is the, uh, is the uh, leader of the troupe and she, she did all the choreography and they just, so we did some, we kind of did like a history of funk kind of concept for lack of a better one. We just kind of like, we need to have some sort of theme and because funk music is one of my favorite topics and so we kind of started with James Brown and went on through the you know the, the most famous funk artists and then we also got to put our original music in there as kind of the second part of the act which was yeah. was really thrilling to have the, the dance along with our original music it was, it was really great exactly yeah that was it was really fantastic um during that performance I recall you uh talking about the wonderful trajectory uh, you were on of getting books or gigs booked uh, not just locally but out of state and just mm -hmm. the band was really exploding can you uh tell me about how um covid might have affected some of those bookings or the traje trajectory you were on well yeah um so just to back up a little bit the, the bright side was definitely when we released a um a music video for a song called love shine um that uh, we had we had a great opportunity to go into White Buffalo, which is one of our favorite venues to play here in town. In fact, it's the only venue that pretty much we play in Sarasota anymore. And uh, they were kind enough to let us come in and perform on their stage on a Sunday afternoon. And we've got a really great following here because we've been here for about eight years. Mm -hmm. and, and people showed up on a Sunday afternoon to be part of the music video. And you can see that music video on YouTube. Um, and uh, you could see the energy was just palpable. I mean, it was just a, it was an amazing experience. I remember the first time, we, the first take that we did, the crowd was so into it that the crowd, we all, or the band, we all just kind of turned around and smiled at each other like, what just happened? We knew we had captured lightning in a bottle on video. And so, um, so that video turned out great. And then we started getting, a, we got a phone call from a guy named Artie Fletcher. You may recognize that name. He was, um, he was in Law and Order. He's an actor, you know, and he was, he's also a comedian. Um, he toured with Gallagher for many years and, and he, but also he managed bands early in his career. In fact, then went on to manage comics like Joan Rivers and, and whatnot. Um, so he called us out of the blue one night and said, I saw your music video, love the band, love what, what you're doing. I'd like to come see you live. Long story short, he basically, he said, I'd, I'd like to come out of my retirement and band management to manage you guys. And um, so he got us connected with Ron Beanstock, which is a very uh, well-known music attorney in New York. And then things just started happening. Um, really, but a lot of it wasn't just magic of connections. It's the fact that Artie just worked so hard. I mean, he he was started booking us like crazy, getting us different opportunities. And we started playing on the other coast. 
playing at the Funky Biscuit in Boca, which is a really you know well known venue that where I think we're the only flute Florida band that even plays there. Um, and so things really just started happening. Um, and then, yeah, <laughs> so fast forward to mid-March and, you know, our, our calendar, if you could look at it, was book solid. And then, of course, you know, just like everybody else, we started, everything started canceling and, you know, and then shortly thereafter, we couldn't even leave the house. You know, we couldn't even rehearse together, you know. Yeah, yeah. So how, the, how is that affecting uh, the band members? And I mean, some I know some musicians are holding virtual concerts, but that would be impossible for for your band, I would think. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, when the, in the very early stages, you know, I was like, hey, you know, because I'm I'm the band leader, always have been, and and kind of like the idea guy. I'm like, okay, here's what we'll do we'll get together and we'll, we'll do a virtual show. We'll basically film our rehearsals and we had a way of making it sound better through video and all that. And then it was, I, and I think it was, you know, God or Providence or whatever. I read an article that I think is a, it was going around Facebook with a really well-written article about why it was such a big deal to self quarantine, even early in the process before it was kind of the thing to do, you know? Um, and I started thinking about, you know, the band members, we you know, we have some older guys in the band, um, some people that might be at higher risk, and then their family members. I thought, you know, and, and then the fact that this, this, this virus has this, you know, this long incubation period, you don't know if you have it. I thought, you know, we could get in rehearsal, and one of the band members could have it, not know it. One of their family members could have it, not know it, and we could, you know, then we could infect each other or something like that. And I thought, it's just not, it's just not worth it. You know, very so, responsible decision well you know um so I, and i'm not casting judgment on other bands that have done it i mean <laughs> i know some bands you know live together you know or they they're roommates or whatever which is great so you know they can do that kind of thing uh, but with us you know especially with eight members just our, exactly uh, our odds increase that we might have a problem so exactly so um Tell tell us how uh, people around the world and also your fans that know of you um, could enjoy some of your music during this time and then moving forward too. Well, um, we're actually that's that's cool because one thing that I've tried to you know I'm I'm not a type of person that kind of sits on my hands <laughs> you know I'm always I'm always thinking and you know, always you know I'm a marketing guy um, as well and and I'm always thinking about. You know, so I looked at this time of, of being off because this the thing that's kind of crazy. I got to thinking about it. This is for the first time in eight years because the band's been playing for eight years that I haven't played pretty much every Friday night somewhere, every Friday or Saturday night somewhere. So, you know, it's allowed me to focus on my songwriting, which is one of my favorite things to do. I just as a band leader that's playing all the time, I don't have that much time. So I really started to try to hone my songwriting and then try to get the band where we can work together virtually. And um, a lot of us have home recording equipment. Um, and so I just said, hey, look, let's put together a process where we can work together virtually. And uh, we're thrilled to announce that we've actually just released a, a new single within the last 24 hours, which would be the first song. It's called Call Your Mother. It's a song that I wrote for my, high, my, my son's high school graduation a few years ago. We kind of adapted it for the band. And that became because we were playing, we'd been playing it live for about four months and the audience kept asking us, when is this CD going to come out or whatever. So we just released the single, but that'll be the first single that we did that was recorded completely virtual. Um, wow. fact, our, our former guitarist, fans of the band will remember uh, our guitarist, Chet Gass, who's a, a young, brilliant guitarist. He's also plays every instrument, mixes and engineers and does pr production. He produced the whole project. Um, and he's actually in Los Angeles. And then our guitarist, our current guitarist, Mark Vincent, lives in St. Pete. And then our, our keyboardist, uh, Jacoby, lives in, in Bradenton. So we, you know, we just did everything virtual. I have a, I have a uh, vocal booth in my wife's um, walk-in closet. Works great. <laughs> so, um, That's excellent. But I, I mean, I, I don't think people could ever tell that it was not recorded live or it's not like a real band, you know, written in a recording studio. It just, it sounds amazing. And that's really it. hats off to Chet. He's, his production was, was incredible. 
So, That's but nice. to answer your question, um, you can you can pick that single up. We've got it actually available for download on our website. If you go to reverendberryandthefunk.com, um, I just put it up. It's available for download. You can't can't find it anywhere else right now. Um, but then our other music is available on YouTube, on uh, Spotify, Apple Music, and of course you can always go to our website and you can buy CDs. We actually sell quite a few CDs. You'd be surprised. We have people that um, that are fans of. A lot, it's a lot of times it's fans, people that like Chicago, people that like Tower of Power, the kind of horn-oriented funk music. They'll order our CDs from around the country. We, we get orders coming in from, from all over, um, which is, you know, people, do people still listen to CDs? Somebody does. They're ordering them from us. We're excited about that. Great, good. And, and talk a little bit, please, uh, about your horn section, um, because that is, you just brought that up. It's a big part of your band and the great sound that comes with it. Yeah, I mean, um, we've got three, three horn players that play with us on a regular basis. That's uh, Don Parker on trombone, Chris Chido on trumpet, and then Bob Miner on saxophone. And then on the, on the albums, we actually have a fourth guy that plays baritone saxophone, Bradley Esau, uh, great player. And um, the horns, that was really our, when we, uh, Chet and I, the, the guy, the younger guitarist that I mentioned earlier, he and I were actually playing in another band together uh, before this started. We were just doing playing weddings, and but we only, we never played on Friday nights. So we said we'd like to start a second band and play the type of music we really wanted to play, which would be horn-oriented funk music nice. from the '70s. Yeah. <laughs> and we thought, well, we got to have a large band, um, and we didn't know any horn players. We, you know, so it was kind of went, but Sarasota is a, is a great musical community. So we just started asking around and, and uh, so it turns out Don Parker, our trombonist, he was with Ringling, Ringling Brothers for 18 years. Um, Chris Chido, great trumpet player, played with uh, Riverview High School. He was a, he was a kilty, you know, he's alumni. And then Bob Miner, uh, now the whole, those first two guys, they've been in the band since the very beginning. And then Bob joined with us about, I want to say about four years ago, three, four years ago. Um, great player, but um, you know, they're super tight. Um, I mean, they just, it makes all the difference. And we, you know, pe we I get asked occasionally, like if we could play a private event or something like that for people on a budget, you know, would you guys play with a smaller band? And the answer is always no, because <laughs> that's absolutely you not, know, you know? Um, and so it's just, it's just who we are really. And, and, um, you didn't, when you first started the band, it was more, you played cover music from the 70s mostly, right? You, it wasn't, you didn't start with writing your own songs right. at that point, right? We had no intention of writing our own music, or I didn't. Um, we, it was about, we, we covered, we played a lot, probably a lot more disco kind of stuff in the beginning. I, I started the band as an honest, the thing that I felt like was missing whenever I went out to go see bands. Uh, my wife and I, you know, because I had every Friday night off, um, we'd go out to dinner and of course we'd want to go watch a band play. And it was, it seemed like a lot of bands were playing, you know, some good stuff. They were playing rock and, uh, or whatever, but I, we wanted to dance, you know, we wanted to get out and, and there was certain types of music that I felt like I was, was lacking in the market. And, and um, so I just thought, wow, I see an opportunity here. And, you know, and, and so but we just went all out and put the horn section together. And, 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 but when we started, yeah, we had no intentions of writing our own music. Um, and I, and it was felt like we were basically playing every popular song from that era that was danceable. You know, we try certain songs that we thought were, were a little bit more obscure cover songs and, they just wouldn't go over. People would go to the bar, clear the dance floor. <laughs> so we thought, if we're going to play songs that people don't know, they might as well be our own. And, <laughs> you know, and so we just kind of started. And, and I had done songwriting and stuff in, in previous th projects that I was involved with since my 20s. Um, you know, and we started and then it gave us something to sell. You know, we were selling CDs and then we noticed that people might buy more T-shirts. It's funny how the, that works. You know, when you're a cover band, people put you in this little, this little segment. And then, but you're, when you're a band that plays originals, even if you do play some covers, you're kind of considered different and it opens up opportunity. You can play more festivals. You can play more music festivals. There's certain venues that don't want bands that just play covers. 
you know. That's, um, that's true, yeah. Yeah, so. So you've done a great job, um, really grown up and growing out of Sarasota. So after COVID passes, uh, do you anticipate having more of those out-of-state bookings come back up? Well, that's the plan. It's, it's funny, literally the last time the band was all together in one room, we had a, we had a big meeting, which we don't get to do very often. Um, and we had a meeting with management kind of thing. And we put together this whole plan because it's funny, back to the very first thing we were talking about, we did that Sarasota Contemporary Dance Show and we did that History of Funk concept. And I just started milling on that. I thought, you know, because there's a whole market out there for theaters. There was. <laughs> um, there will I mean, be again. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping, you know, because the, and the, the tribute act thing is really big. Um, maybe unfortunately, but it is what is. You know, I don't fight things in the marketplace. I try to, frankly, capitalize on them if I can. So it's not our purpose, it's not our goal to be a tribute act, but we came up with the concept of like, you know, because uh, of doing that same history of funk concept and but working our originals into it, but trying to go into the theater market because the theater market is huge. There's, I mean, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, I mean, there's lots of Eagles tribute acts, Fleetwood Mac tribute acts and stuff, and they're playing almost every night of the week in a theater somewhere. These are usually places that seat 300 to 1,000 people. While we wrap up here, if you could go ahead and remind us all where we can enjoy your music and purchase your merchandise so we can let everyone yeah, know. Um, just go to reverendberryandthefunk.com. We try to keep our website pretty up to date. Um, and then really we do, we were pretty active on Facebook as well. And then Instagram, I'm trying to be more active on Instagram. And then of course, you know, all of our music videos are on, on YouTube. Um, and most of our music is on Spotify or Apple music. You know, if you just want to stream it, but we certainly appreciate if you, if you order our music online, if you buy a CD, even if you just listen to it on Spotify, you know, some people like a souvenir, you know, it's something they can hold on to. We do have some really great merch that we actually, that was another exciting thing that we started selling a lot more merch just in the last couple months. We had some new t-shirt designs, some coffee mugs, those kinds of things. And, and then, <laughs> you know, but, but, you know, it's still, it's sitting out in my garage right now and we'll bring it back out. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, super. Barry, thanks so much for spending time with us today and educating us and look forward to what the future brings. Well, thank you, Tamara. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thanks. So thanks. Much. Okay.